The ablative case can really seem like the junk drawer of cases. You can translate it with a with, a by, an in, an on, a from, sometimes an at, a than, and I'm sure there's others that I've forgotten. Really, it makes more sense to define the ablative as the adverbial case. Nouns in the ablative case often function like adverbs, describing how the action happened, although this too doesn't take into account every use of the ablative. This video will talk about ablative absolutes, a peculiar and unique use of the ablative case. The ablative absolute will predominantly consist of a noun and a participle in the ablative case, and it will show a time or a cause relationship with the rest of the sentence. It's often and literally translated as with, and that shows that it's ablative, the noun, the participle. So like with the girl having been kissed, or with the boy leaving. It's absolute because it's a phrase that is separate from the rest of the sentence, somehow connected but not essential. So the noun in the ablative absolute will never be the subject or object of the verb. So here, let me illustrate. Caesar acceptis literis nuntium mitet. Caesar sends the messenger, and here's the ablative absolute, with the letter having been received. Acceptis literis is the ablative absolute because it's a noun, literis, and a participle, acceptis, in the ablative case. And here it's showing a time relationship with the main clause. He sends the messenger after the letter has been received. And in fact, you know, we don't have to translate our ablative absolute so literally. It's perfectly fine to translate this as after the letter has been received, or even when the letter was received. I like to keep passive Latin participles in the passive voice in English just because the exact information about who did the receiving isn't given to us. Since the ablative absolute is only loosely connected to the rest of the sentence, without greater context, we can't say that it was Caesar who received the letter, or say, a Gaul, like Vercingetorix. But sometimes it is possible to translate a passive participle actively. Here's another example. Talibus dictis in flamas feror. Which such things having been said, I am carried into the flames. Talibus dictis is our ablative absolute. But here the word talibus takes the place of a noun, with such things. And dictis is our ablative perfect participle. The words were said before I went into the flames. And indeed, we can translate our ablative absolute a bit better with after such things were said or when such things were said. The last two examples I've given you have used perfect participles, and you know you can use present participles too. Nostris militibus cunctantibus aquilifer desiluit. With our troops hesitating, the eagle bearer jumped down. Let's say instead, as our troops were hesitating, or while our troops were hesitating. Here, the present tense of the participle is important, because present participles show a same-time action in respect to the rest of the sentence. The hesitating is happening and is still going on when the aquilifer jumped. In sentences with perfect participles, the ablative absolute phrase is done and completed by the time that the action in the main clause happens. So here, subductis navibus, exercitum in hibernis colocavit. With the ships hauled up, he placed his army in winter quarters. Here, the ships were taken out of the water first, and then the army was sent into its winter quarters. There's a definite order of events, and the perfect participle showing time before action happened first. We could translate it as after the ships had been hauled up, but we have to be careful to use the pluperfect tense. The hauling of the ships happened before he placed his army in winter quarters. And since kolokawit is in the perfect tense, we have to translate the ablative absolute with a pluperfect tense verb if we're going to make it a clause. Had been hauled up. So yes, ablative absolutes often show a time relationship with the main clause. They can also show cause, though, and so we could translate ablative absolutes with the words since or because. So check this out. Consumpto omni frumento pacem petiverunt. With all of their grain consumed, they saw peace. So you could make the case for this translation. After all of their grain had been consumed, they saw peace. But isn't it more like this one, though? Since all of their grain had been consumed, they sought peace. There's a strong cause and effect here. The grain was gone, and that led them to seek peace. And less often, the ablative absolutes shows a concessive clause, and we could translate it with although, like this. Turbus excitatis, 
tamen altitudo pupium has superavat. With the towers built up, sure, but the presence of the tamen, though, in the main clause, nevertheless, just screams out for us to translate the ablative absolute as, although the towers had been built up, nevertheless, the height of the sterns rose above them. I have two more notes with ablative absolutes. Sometimes you'll see two nouns together, or a noun with an adjective, like te duque, or Gaio Mario et Lucio Valerio Consulibus. These can be ablative absolutes, but the second noun is taking the place of the participle. We should read into this the present participle of esse, being, or even just a simple as. So te duque is with you being the leader, or with you as the leader. And the second phrase here, with Gaius Marius and Lucius Valerius as consuls, is one of the standard ways Romans noted the year in literature. They took the names of the two consuls, and it was such an honor too, and referred to the year with their names in an ablet of absolute. Lucius Valerius was a consul with Gaius Marius in the year 100 BC. Also, I've taken a lot of examples from the writings of Julius Caesar, the great dictator, politician, and general, who wrote extensively about his own wars. And just as an aside, in all of antiquity, we don't have any other famous general's account of his own wars besides Caesar's. We don't know what Alexander the Great was thinking, or Themistocles, or Hannibal, or Scipio Africanus. Whether you think of Caesar's writings as propaganda or self-praise, or just straight reporting of the facts, it's still pretty amazing that we have his own words even today. Caesar himself liked to use the ablative absolute in his writing because there is a succinct, brief quality to it, kind of like what you would expect in military reports. But the ablative absolute also makes for a great transition between events, and this is how Caesar really uses it to its fullest in his works. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff, so let's summarize. The ablative absolute consists of a noun and participle in the ablative case, although sometimes the participle can be replaced by another noun or adjective, like what we saw with the names of the consuls. You can literally translate it as with the noun, the participle. So with the army having been defeated, or with the ship sailing on the sea. The ablative absolute can show a time connection to the rest of the sentence, but it can also be causal in nature or even concessive. And so we can turn the phrase into a clause in English in our translation, introduced by when or as or after, or if it's causal, since or because, or concessive, although. And finally, pay attention to the tense of the participle in the ablative absolute. A perfect participle will show that the action is finished by the time of the main clause. A present participle will show that the action is still going on when the action in the main clause occurs. And a rare future participle in an ablative absolute will show an action that has yet to happen with respect to the main clause.